Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Um, today what I want to do is I want to give you a mathematical introduction to probability. In statistics and probability, we call one action that occurs, we call that an event or a trial. And that event or trial has possible outcomes. Okay? What we're interested in is the probability that once an event, when an event is set into action, what's the probability of a certain outcome? Okay? So an example. Okay? Tossing a coin is our event or a trial. So one event is tossing a coin. Right? I toss the coin, I stop, there's the outcome, it's heads. If I want another trial, I go again and I stop, there's the outcome. If I want another one, I go again and I stop, there's the outcome. Okay? So the probability of getting heads or tails in this case is the same. So what we can write is the probability of heads is one half and we can say the probability of tails is also one half. Okay. okay. So let's look at another example, rolling a six-sided die. Right? So whatever happens, my probability of rolling any number is one sixth. Okay. So what we can say is the probability of rolling. So we say the probability that the outcome is a one is one sixth the probability that the outcome is a 2 is well, still 1 6, right? And so on, okay? So in this case, my action or event, or sorry, my event or trial is rolling the die. My outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? Now, what we need is, so these two are kind of simple cases, right? But what we need is what happens when uh, we have a few situations in a row or things like that. We want different ways to be able to think about um, to be able to think about these uh, outcomes. Okay, so we call the set of all possible outcomes U because it's the universal set. Okay, your book might also call it S. Okay, so or S. Okay. Uh, we also call this outcomes that we want to happen, right? So all the possible outcomes are U or S. The possible the outcomes that we want to happen are A. Okay. The probability of A happening, so probability of A is whatever the number of successful outcomes is divided by the number of total outcomes, right? All right, so you toss a coin three times, determine the probability that you end up with two tails, okay? And we'll talk about at least two tails in a second. But you want the probability that you end up with two tails, all right? So for this, you toss a coin three times, okay? So if I'm tossing a coin three times, right, let's look back at this definition. We call one action a trial or an event. So here we actually have three trials that are happening and we're looking for a possible outcome. Okay. So um, what we do is so if I want exactly two tails, okay, uh, what we're gonna do, since we have multiple events happening, okay, we have multiple events, there's only few outcomes. We're gonna use a strategy called a tree diagram. Okay. So what this does is it breaks up for me um, my one event into its outcomes, right? So now we say this was the first toss. It could be heads or it could be tails. If it's heads, the next toss could be heads or it could be tails. And the next toss could be heads or it could be tails, right? If it was heads and then tails, the next toss could still be heads and tails, right? Over here could still be heads and tails. Here could be heads or tails. And here it could be heads or tails. Okay? So what we want to do now is we want exactly 
two tails. So if it was heads, 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 that's no good, right? So remember, our question now is the probability of getting two tails is the number of ways of getting two tails over the number of total outcomes. All right? So what do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. All ends of a tree branch are different outcomes, right? So how many different outcomes are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? So there's eight different outcomes. Okay? Now, if we want to count the ones that have exactly two tails, there's heads, 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 that's no good. Heads, heads, tails is no good. Heads, tails, tails is exactly two tails. Tails, heads, tails, that's exactly two tails. And tails, tails, heads. Whoa. So tails, tails, and then heads is exactly two tails, right? So one, two, one, two, one, two. So all those are exactly two tails, which now answers the question, what's the number of ways to get two tails? It's one, two, three. Okay. Um, now, the next part of this question says, how about at least two tails? Okay. So the probability of getting at least two tails is the number of ways getting at least two tails over the number of total. Well, total is still eight, right? But let's look at this at least two tails. So what does at least two tails mean? It means either it's two tails or it could be three tails. So the only thing, so we have all these and we're also going to include this guy, right? Tails, 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 okay? So that now gives us a total of four out of eight, which means one half. So the probability that you end up with two tails is three eighths. Probability that you end up with at least two tails is a half. Okay? All right. So if you roll two dice, determine the probability that you roll a sum of six. Now, the problem here is imagine you're making a tree diagram that has one, two, three, four, five, six branches, because you could have outcomes of one, two, three, four, five, or six, and then each one of those branches has six as well. So in the end, you're gonna have 36 branches, right? Over here, we had three events, but each event only has a few different outcomes. That's why we use the tree diagram, right? Only a few different outcomes, tree diagram. Over here, a lot of different outcomes, so we don't want to use a tree diagram. In fact, what we want to do is we want to make what we call a lattice diagram. Okay, so what that means is we're just going to make a diagram that has one, two, three, four, five. So there's our outcomes of event one and our outcomes of event number two. All right, so these are possible outcomes of event one possible outcomes of event two. So how many different outcomes are there when I roll two dice? All right? So remember, what I'm looking for is the probability that we get a sum of six. All right? So this means that we're looking for the number of ways that you get a sum of six over the number of total outcomes. Okay? Well, the number of total outcomes is, well, there's six different outcomes that could happen in the first one, and each one of those six outcomes could have six outcomes on the second one. So there's six, 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 there's six times six, 36 total outcomes. Okay? And now we want to figure out which ones add up to six. Well, if I rolled a one, then the second one would have to be a five. So these outcomes add up to six. Two would have to add up to four. Three, three, four, two, five, one. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five. So the probability of, add, of rolling a sum of six is exactly five out of 36. Okay? 
So this is called a lattice diagram, and um, it's good thing is that if you've got a lot of outcomes, it works better than a tree diagram. The problem is here we had three events. So here, if we had three events, we would have to kind of picture a three-dimensional, um, a three-dimensional cube, right? That's our uh, lattice, right? And your homework's going to ask you to do that. I would say just picture. Don't actually try to measure everything. Okay. All right. So let's look at our third method. You draw a card out of a deck, determine the probability that it's either a queen or a heart. Okay. So the problem here is so. Let's look back at our definitions, right? Um, an action or event or trial, and it's got different possible outcomes. Okay, here we had three events, okay, two outcomes each. Here we had two events, six outcomes each. Here we've only got one event, but we're asked for different types of outcomes. Okay, so one event is going to allow us to do what I'm about to do, and that's to draw a Venn diagram. Okay, so a Venn diagram is basically going to demonstrate um, when we have different um, stipulations in our outcomes that may have an intersection or may not. Okay, so uh, what this shows is one event, but the outcome has kind of multiple possibilities. Okay. So this will be rolling a queen, this will be pulling out a queen, and this will be pulling out a heart. Okay? So in a deck, there are so the probability of getting a queen is we know it's four out of fifty-two. Because in a deck of cards, there's fifty-two cards and four of them are queens. Right? The probability of getting a heart is 13 out of 52 because there's 13 hearts there's 52 cards right if you want a queen or a heart right we can add these two together so queen or a heart we can add these two together right but you get 17 out of 52 okay well there's a problem with that the problem is that there's four queens, there's 13 hearts, but the queen of hearts is counted in here as well as here. So what we do is we say, well, there's one queen of hearts. So that's one in the intersection. There's three queens and there's 12 other hearts. So there's one queen of hearts, three other queens, 12 other hearts. So in total, so then this is now gone, right? And in total, the probability of getting a queen or a heart is 3 and 1 is 4 and 12 is 16 out of 52. Huh? So this is the method that you're going to use when you have um, one event, right? So remember, one event, one action, one trial and you have different possibilities for your outcomes and those possibilities might or might not intersect right if there's a zero in here it means that they don't actually intersect okay alright so for homework and in class you're gonna try all this stuff and we'll talk about it tomorrow alright have a good night